Hayden here from AMB and I'd like to welcome you to the AMB Trail and Enduro Tire Group Test. Now, your tires are the only thing that connect you to the ground when you're riding your bike. So they can make a huge difference in your riding experience. To help you pick your next tires, we've had 24 different treads from pretty much every main, major manufacturer. We've had those treads with four different testers across three months, going through all different casing, compound, and tread types to try and help you pick what your next best tire is. I'm Ben. And I'm Ryan. And we are the Canberra crew that are working on the tyre test for AMB. We're undertaking a big enduro tyre test here involving four riders and multiple brands. My name's Hayden, I live in Brisbane and I like riding steep tech just as much as I like an all day leg melter. So throughout the test I've had my bike set up in a mullet configuration. I've had tyres from Specialized, Goodyear and two different sets from Pirelli. Hi, I'm Ben from AMB. And the bike that I've chosen to use for our AMB Enduro tyre test is a Pivot Firebird. It's got 165 mils rear travel and 175 mils on front, and it is a full 29er setup. Hi, I'm Bam. I'm from Brisbane. I uh, ride uh, Enduro and Trail, and I like it as steep as they come. So I've been testing tyres on my Paiga 29er. Uh, I've been trying train tests from Continental, Michelin, and Bontrager. Hi, I'm Ryan from AMB. I'm part of the Canberra crew and my test bike of choice is my Forbidden Druid V2. Uh, it has 130 mils of rear wheel travel. Uh, it has 150 out front. And the reason that I like it is it's a very capable short travel bike thanks to its high pivot. So we've had 24 tires with four testers for three months. We've gone through a huge amount of different casings, compounds, and tread patterns in an attempt to help inform you how to next pick your best tire. Now for the sake of consistency across this test, we have introduced some consistent testing parameters. The first of those being that we've all been running 30 mil internal width aluminium rims from DT Swiss. Second, we've all been using finish line fiber link tubeless sealant. Now third, we've all been using digital pressure gauges, however, each tester has been choosing their preferred pressure for each tire. That's prescribed within the reviews of each individual tire. And finally, we haven't used any inserts. We're testing these tires on their merit as a standalone product, not with the support of an insert or anything else. So a key thing to understand when you're going to pick a new set of tires for your bike, primarily is what casing you want. So you need to consider where you ride, what kind of bike you're riding, and what kind of ride feel you want. Picking the right casing for that can really help accentuate your ride, or it can really bring it down. You, know, you, can, you have everything from Maxxis's XO casing, as you see on things like cross-country tyres, the Specialised Grid Trail casing, the Goodyear Enduro casing, right up to things like the Pirelli Dual Wall Plus casing. Now these go from single to double to reinforced double ply, and picking the right one of these casings, regardless of the tread pattern, can really help you redefine your ride. Now there's no need to go out and just buy the biggest, thickest, heaviest casing you can find. You don't need to go to your local bike shop and flex your ego like that. A smaller, lighter casing is gonna give you better bump compliance and also probably faster rolling and a more engaging ride out on the trail. So moving through these reviews, you're gonna hear us talking a lot about both chemical and mechanical grip. Now what we're talking about there with chemical grip is the grip that you get from the rubber compound on the trail, whereas mechanical grip is the grip you get from the tread pattern on the trail. So chemical grip, you have a really soft tire, it's gonna typically be really good on hard pack trails, wet roots, rocks, things like that. It's gonna wear out faster. A hard tire is gonna last longer and roll faster. Alternatively with mechanical grip, a tire with a big 
tall tread is going to really dig into soft soils, whereas a tyre with a complex, close, low tread pattern is going to be much faster and grippier on hard packed terrain. So the four test riders we've been using for this group test all weigh between 70 and 85 kilos and we're riding you know, big trail or enduro bikes. Uh, that's not to mean we haven't given consideration to those riding e-bikes or maybe riders who have a bigger system weight who are just bigger people. Uh, the typical consideration there is you probably want a rear tyre specifically that is got a heavier casing to give you more support and also probably a harder tread pattern. You're going to be doing more riding and you're going to be putting more load through that tyre, so you want something that's going to last. You want to get the most bang for your buck. So I've previously mentioned we haven't included the use of inserts in this test. That's not to, that's not to say that we don't you know, see their merit and use them ourselves. Um, Mike and I have just wrapped up a insert group test that's available on the web now where we've been through, how many, how many different inserts, Mike? Yeah. 10 different inserts. So if you want to know specifically about inserts and how they worked with our control tyres, jump onto ambmag.com.au and check out all the details. Hi, I'm Ryan from AMB and today I'm going to be talking to you about some of the tyres that we've got on test over here at AMB. I had five tread patterns to test across uh, three manufacturers and suppliers. Um, a couple of the tyres that I used worked a little bit better as a front or rear. Um, we will talk about that a little bit further later. Um, the conditions that I rode in were pretty varied. Uh, we've had a lot of dry weather and a lot of really wet weather. Um, I spent a little bit of time down the coast on tyres, I spent a little bit of time here in Canberra and also a little bit of time in the mountains. So lots of different terrains that we use these tyres in. Um, some of them will be a little bit more familiar to uh, you riders out there viewing these um, and hopefully will help you identify your next tyre choice based on some of the conditions that we rode in and you have at your local trail network. We've got the Vittoria Martello. Again, running at 29 by 2.4. We've run this on the front and the rear. And as you can see, it has quite a moto tread profile. It's a little bit rounder, uh, a little bit faster rolling than some of the other tires that we've uh, reviewed. And it's a little bit chonky at 1,296 grams. When I first took the Martello out of its packaging, I was maybe a little bit alarmed at how supple the casing was. It felt a little bit floppy, very, very soft, and I was unsure at how the sidewalls were gonna stand up and how the reinforcement was gonna handle the rocky trails that we have around Stromlo and Canberra. I've been pleasantly surprised these have a fantastic trail feel. They are incredibly supple on the trail and we have had minimal bottoming out and rim dings on these tires. Straight away I noticed that these tires are heavily siped and work really, really well on hard pack and rocky conditions. I would highly recommend these tires on an e-bike especially front and rear, as I think the tread pattern, once it becomes a little bit worn, could even be reversed and run the other way around, giving you a little bit of extra life out of them. I was really impressed at how well they gripped on dusty, sandy conditions over a really hard surface underneath. Uh, it's something that a lot of tires are unable to do because the knobs cannot purchase into the terrain. And I think the chemical grip of the compound that, uh, the soft compound that Vittoria have used is really, really good. The profile of the knobs and the heavily siped um, sort of shape of the knobs really finds a lot of edges and claws its way into the ground without the knob having to. I really like the profile of this and I found that this was my favorite tire on the rear of my bike. It's rounder profile enabled the back to sort of drift into things, uh, yet it stood up to the abuse and hasn't really worn that heavily as well. This was my favorite rear tire, and I found that the compound of rubber was soft yet durable, which is a bit of a puzzle to me. 
it has been reinforced with graphene and silica. Um, it is made out of premium products and I think Vittoria have done a very good job making a relatively soft compound tyre still remain quite durable. On the rear I found that it tipped into corners really nicely, let go in a predictable manner and also braked very, very well in a straight line and also leaning into the turn. The transition between centre knobs and side knobs was really predictable and I think it is a very, very good tyre that would also work well on the front if you're riding in predominantly dusty and dry conditions. I was able to ride the Martello in uh, very, very wet conditions and was pleasantly surprised at how well it sheds wet dirt and mud as well. It's soft compound measuring on our shore hardness uh, gauge at 48 shore hardness, which is quite soft. Uh, it worked well on wet rocks and roots, yet still rolled quite well as well due to its tightly spaced nature. Next up, we've got the Vittoria Mazza in the Enduro Race Compound. Again, a reinforced sidewall that is incredibly supple. I've always noticed that Vittoria tyres have a really nice ride feel and the Mazza is probably one of the best all-rounders that I have ridden to date. He isn't the grippiest front tyre that I've reviewed out of the five uh, tyres that I've reviewed uh, through this group test. However, its durability and ride feel and also rolling resistance are some, th some of the things that I've considered throughout the test. It sheds wet dirt and mud very, very well. Unfortunately, we were caught in some pretty heavy downpours and it still remained grippy even over the loosest rocks and wettest routes that we rode. Again, it measured a 48 shore hardness, which isn't the softest that we tried, but somehow it still holds onto wet terrain really well. How does it go in drier and dustier conditions? The knobs themselves are heavily siped which means there is additional edges biting into the terrain. Where the mechanical grip cannot be found, i.e. the knobs cannot make it into the dirt or into the, the surface of the ground themselves, the heavily siped knobs are able to grip the surface and the soft compound will give us that chemical grip that we like from a quality tyre. We ran it in the 29 by 2.4 and it measured a 59 mil casing width it was the heaviest tyre that I reviewed, which is probably because of the really tall knobs, in particular the side knobs. Uh, it weighed in at 1,368 grams, and while it was okay on the rear, it wasn't as fast rolling as the Martello, which is why we think that the Mazza was best as a front tyre. Unless you were riding in really, really loose conditions, the Mazza would make an exceptional rear tyre as well. For such an open tread pattern, the Mazza rolled quite well, especially on the front. Its transition between the centre knobs and the side knobs was predictable and consistent, and it's showing minimal signs of wear throughout the test. There is a little bit of undercutting on the side knobs and our um, central sort of braking knobs as well but it's been pretty good and the knobs are long enough that they haven't folded over and torn completely. I really like the fact that it has a very supple trail feel. It means that the tyre can conform to the ground, yet the sidewalls are stiff enough to stop from rimming out and damaging your rims. It doesn't squirm when changing direction, especially in deep berms, yet it remains supple and conforms to terrain on the rough stuff. The Vittoria Mazza Enduro Race, we feel, is paired best with its friend, the Martello, as a front tyre, Martello as a rear, and for me personally, was my favourite tyre uh, set to test on this review. I really enjoyed my time on the Vittorias, I really wanted to ride some tyres that I'd never ridden before, and I was pleasantly surprised with these, and they are a premium offering at a pretty competitive price. Now the Pirelli Race Enduro M is their tip of the spear enduro race tyre. 
M stands for mixed. It's been designed for use across a wide variety of terrains and to be as predictable as possible. We can see that through the 222 staggered tread pattern that leaves no dead zone in the intermediate lean angle part of the tire. It's in their softest possible compound and has two layers of sidewall casing. So when I close my eyes and think about this tire, confidence inspiring is what comes to mind. It, it was like my silent little friend out on the trail. This thing's just so predictable and so easy to get along with that in honestly, I kind of forgot I was using it during testing, which is kind of what the best tires do. If you've got the right tire for you, you shouldn't really be noticing it. Now, I have did a lot of riding on hard pack and granite with this tire. And I noticed specifically when I was going over to a lean angle, it had a beautiful transition and there was really no dead zone. I knew what this tire was going to do all the time. The casing is really supple, ended up at around 21 PSI during my testing. I did go a little lower than that, but I didn't quite have the support I wanted. But at 21 PSI, I found it had good small bump compliance and those two layers really did help damp dampen small bump chatter when I was out on the trail. Uh, during testing, I did treat myself to a little trip to Derby. Uh, and these were the tires I took with me, purely because they are such a good companion on a wide variety of terrains. Everything from the flow of Air You Going to the tech of Roxanne and the pure high speed roughness of sheer pin, this tire really gave me everything I wanted and nothing I didn't. Now being that these are race specific tires from Pirelli, they've really put all their eggs in this basket. So they're a really soft compound and a really supple and supportive tread pattern. That being said, they do roll a little slower and wear out quite a bit faster than something like the regular Pirelli Enduro range of tyres that are also on this test. So take consideration as to what kind of riding you're really doing and how much riding you want to get out of your tyres. So as the name suggests, in my opinion, this tyre is perfect for the Enduro racer who wants consistent traction no matter where they're going. Uh, it's, it's really well paired with the Pirelli Race Enduro T on the rear, but that's not to be said that you couldn't run this tire on the rear as well. Uh, if you're looking to chase seconds between the tape and you want a no compromise enduro tire, it's worth checking out. T stands for traction and Pirelli's new Scorpion race enduro T delivers just that. So this is a really aggressive rear specific tire with a wide open tread pattern with really sharp edges. It almost looks like one of Pirelli's motocross scoop tires in that it's got tall, rounded, square edges and massive corner knobs. In profile, it's quite a square tire and it looks to deliver perfect braking and off-camber traction out on the trail. So across 12 hours of testing on this tire, I noticed that it really had nearly unmatched braking traction specifically and grip on off-cambers. There was one specific scenario where I was following my friend down this really poorly built off-camber bit of trail. I was almost wincing because I thought my rear end was gonna let go and put me into the bushes like what had just happened to him. But I sailed right past him and almost laughed. The grip that this thing gives in the right scenarios on soft, loamy soil is insane. Now that's not to say this tire didn't also perform well on hard pack and rock and things like that. The tread, when combined with the really soft rubber compound, gives a lot of both chemical and mechanical grip on just about anything you can throw in front of it. And the casing is quite supple while also being pretty supportive. I was floating at around 26 PSI for this. I did try and go a little lower, but I got a bit aggressive there and ended up dinting some rims. But around 26 PSI gave me the perfect amount of support with no sidewall folding or burps. The only real downsides we have for this tire are the use life, but it's, it's to be expected with a really aggressive tire. Um, I had this tire on a recent trip to Derby and a bit of riding around home. It's got around 12 hours on it at the moment and it's pretty close to being toast. Uh, I'm hard on rear tires. I do a lot of rear end steering and I'm not great at my brake bias, but this is a fairly slow rolling and fast wearing tire and a rider should only really pick it if they're looking for performance when they're going down steep terrain. Now, who is this tire best for? As I've mentioned, it's got a lot of grip. It doesn't roll all that well and its off-camber traction is nearly unmatched. And that kind of gives you a really good cross-section of who should be using this tire. If you're out racing on stages where you want nothing but sharp braking points and peak traction through all different kinds of scenarios, give this tire a look. Moving over to Europe, our next tires come from Schwalbe. The hands damp has been around for quite a long time and we're on the second generation of this tire. 
The few changes that have happened to the tyre is the knobs have gotten a little bit, little bit lower and it's become a little bit more compact in its tread. But the shape of the tyre layout has remained the same. The ones that we were supplied come in the Attic Soft compound and the Super Trail casing, which is essentially their sort of like equivalent of an enduro race style. Hands down for rolls quite quickly. It's not a front or rear specific. It is a very rounded tyre. So on the front, you find it sort of wanders a little bit, especially on the hard pack. Um, I personally found that it was a really good match as a rear tyre, offering a little bit more braking than another Schwalbe tyre that I ran on the front, um, which was also not front or rear specific. So the sweet spot for me was to run the hands down on the rear. At 1,029 grams, it's no surprise that this is the lightest in the test, especially considering it was 2.35 inches in width. Now, it's not the widest tire, but it does blow up reasonably close to the other, other tires, which is due to its rounded profile. This tire spent most of its time on my bike in Tasmania, uh, going Bay of Fires, so Dragon's Trail Trail, and then a couple of days in Maidana. It has started to show quite a lot of wear, even after a couple of days riding, but a lot of that has been bike park or very hard compact trails. Um, it's worked really well in all conditions other than mud where it does require a bit of speed to free up. Um, but if you're riding in really muddy conditions, you're probably not gonna use this tire anyway. It's no surprise that it wore, wore a little bit. It's no different to if you went and did like three days at Threadbow and came home with new tires that were on their way out. Rounding out our trip to Germany with Schwalbe is probably one of the most fun tire names to say and for those in Canberra, a bit of a soft spot, the Tacky Chan. Jackie Chan hails from Canberra with his parents still owning a restaurant here. So it's really nice to have something like this and hear that he's quite supportive of the name. The aggressive tread pattern of the Tacky Chan rolls quite quickly, but does make you work for it, much like the actor himself. You'll find that if you're just relaxing and rolling around, it doesn't do much for you. It's, it doesn't stand out, it's not a stellar tire, but when you really are chasing grip and pushing really hard is where it comes into its own. The Attic Soft Compound and the Super Trail Casing were quite a good combination, especially when they were matched to the hands damp that I ended up running on the rear of my Firebird. Uh, ran this also as a rear tire, but found that it lacked the braking that something like the hands damp offered. Much like the hands damp, this was pretty much exclusively used in Tasmania and in a bike park. So, ran these tires at Maidana for a couple of days and found that on the rear, it didn't offer the braking that a hands damp did, so I ran it on the front. In the mud, it did clog up a little bit until you got the opportunity to get some speed up and it would clear out quite quickly. Again, if you're riding exclusively in mud, you're probably gonna ride a different tire from a different brand or Schwalbe themselves, but it's a pretty good compromise, especially if you, the course has a wet section or you're caught out. Wear on it, was really, really good. The trail feel was really good. And the standard 2.5s widths. The Tacky Chan is reasonably light at 1140 grams. When running the Tacky Chan front and rear, I settled on, again, what everyone in the group seems to think is really low pressures, 22 PSI in the front and 24 PSI in the rear. No issues with the tire rolling or with denting rims, thanks to the Super Trail casing. The Michelin Wild Enduro front tire in the Magic X2 uh, compound and the gravity casing. This has been in the market for a fair few years. Um, I actually spent most of my 2019, 2020 on this tire um, and at the time was my favorite tire. Uh, I was actually curious to, uh, to get back to it after trying other tires. Uh, in the meantime, I found it to be a a tire that really rewards committing riding. So if you like to just um, cruise around on mellow terrain, you'll find that even though it has a really aggressive uh, tread pattern, when you look at it, it almost looks like a motocross tire um, in really aggressive uh, side knobs. It's a tire that really needs that commitment uh, to sink in. Uh, the uh, Michelin has used a harder compound rubber underneath the Magic X2 um, uh, outer rubber which is a super soft uh, compound to give the tire a really stiff really um, really supportive ride 
which means that if you're not pushing, if you're not really putting a lot of, uh, a lot of commitment into that front wheel, you will feel like you're washing out, as it happens to me a fair few times while using it just from not paying enough attention or not actually riding hard enough um, at the time. Being front specific, Michelin actually made this a completely different tire from the rear specific tire where the casing is a different casing for both tires. In this case, they use three layers of 60 TPI, uh, TPI casing, which gives a really sturdy, really stout feel while on the trail. Uh, so you don't get a lot of feedback from the trail and it really, really gives you uh, high rolling, uh, rolling resistance. So if you want a tire that rolls well, the Michelin's not that tire. It will reward you with incredible amount of grip when you're going really fast and you really want to commit. However, don't expect to be a best all around tire uh, because it's not. It's really a tire for those committed, for those wanting to push uh, your limits. I've been fortunate enough to ride this, uh, ride this tire in Brisbane in the common um, loose over hard terrain that we, uh, that we have in most of Australia. Uh, but also I took it on a two week trip back to the, uh, the homeland of Portugal where I rode granite trails, uh, clay trails, and it really performed on all of them. Um, on clay, on really greasy terrain with a lot of roots and a lot of wet rock, you want to be a little bit more cautious as the compound does harden up in colder temperatures uh, and you will feel like you're not getting as much grip uh, as you'd otherwise expect. This tire is better suited to that really committed rider, that rider that wants to push, that wants a tire that allows them to push, uh, not for one that just wants to, uh, that wants to cruise. So if you want to cruise, maybe look elsewhere. If you are a committed rider, really want to feel like you have a strong tire underneath you, give this size a go. The Michelin Wild Enduro rear specific tire in the gum 3X uh, compound in the gravity casing. Uh, the name couldn't be more obvious. It's a rear specific tire. Although, unlike most tires in the range where you'll find with big blocky uh, knobs in the rear. This actually has a pretty small uh, knob configuration, which gives you really good grip, uh, particularly in really techni technical climbs, but also if you're going downhill on really steep terrain, it just gives you that extra bit of bite, that extra bit of grip, which also translates on a lot of rolling resistance, which to be expected for a high performance tire. The high rolling resistance is to be expected on a tire that has a really soft compound, suitable for a gravity oriented tire. The rear specific tire has three layers of 40 TPI um, casing. It makes for a really, really stout uh, rear tire with a lot of rubber. Um, I've run this tire with both an insert back in 2019, 2020, and now recently for this test uh, without, uh, without any sort of insert. And to be honest, I think you don't need it. Um, it is a really stout, really good prevention against pinch flatting um, and uh, knock on wood which hasn't happened yet, um, I'd absolutely run it without an insert. Who's this tire for? Just like the front, for a rider that is committed uh, to their riding, a rider that wants the best grip possible, but is ready to put the effort in to get the best out of the tire. You are gonna face a lot of rolling resistance due to the uh, high grip of the tire. It's just something to be expected from a tire like this that is very gravity oriented. Next up, going to be chatting to you about the Maxxis Asagai. I've got the Asagai in a 29 by 2.5. Uh, it is in the Max Grip compound and a double down casing. The double down casing has a thick butyl insert in both sidewalls, uh, which gives the casing of the tyre a little bit more support. Uh, it is also a 2 by 120 TPI tyre, so very, very high quality and unlike the downhill tire, it conforms to the train a little bit nicer and has a little bit better feel on the trail. Um, it's a little bit more lively than the downhill tire, the double down casing. This is also the WT, which means it is designed to be working on a wider rim. So hence the 30 mil internal rims that we've got from DT Swiss. Uh, and while we've used it on front and rear, I have found that it works best for me in the conditions that I've been riding on the front. The Double Down Asagai is one of the heftier tyres that we have on review. It weighs in at 1,348 grams 
And part of the reason for that is it's very, very tall knobs, especially the side knobs. This does, however, mean that it can bite into terrain like not many other tyres on the market. Uh, it is very, very impressive when the going gets loose and its soft compound, Max Grip uh, 3C, also enables it to grip on loose over hard pack and or wet rocks and roots. The casing measured uh, 59 mils uh, and 2.5 wide, obviously. Uh, and we were really, really impressed with the way this tyre performed on a large variety of trails. It does, however, roll quite slowly, which is one of the reasons why I took it off the rear of the bike and used it exclusively on the front after the first few rides. It does get a little bit bogged down when the trails are flatter, like our home tracks at Stromlo. Whenever there is steep descents, however, this is definitely the tyre that I would choose. We had it paired with another Maxxis tyre. We found that when paired with the DHR2, which I also reviewed, um, it was a really, really good combo. The wear on the Asagai was pretty good. Obviously being on the front, we started to get a little bit of undercutting on some of the side knobs and the braking knobs from heavy braking. But all in all, it performed really, really well, even though it is in the 3C Max Grip compound. To explain the 3C uh, Max Grip compound a little bit more, the side knobs have got softer compound, the middle knobs have got a little bit firmer compound, and underneath those knobs giving them support, the compound is firmer again. It is a premium offering from Maxxis, and we highly recommend the Asagai as a front tyre if you're riding on drier, looser, and potentially hard pack conditions. Um, if you're riding in very, very wet or deep or loose terrain, uh, it would also be an exceptional rear tyre. Just remember that it doesn't roll as fast as some others we had on test. The CST BFT, funnily enough, is the cheapest tyre that we have on test, um, but also one of the lightest. Uh, it is a 2.4 by 29 uh, inch tyre. It had a 58 mil casing width uh, and it had an EPS uh, compound. Uh, it's a little bit firmer, a little bit more durable compound and it rolled really quite nicely with its slightly lower profile knobs. It weighed in at 1,004 grams, so again, one of the lighter tyres that we tested and it was geared more to a fast rolling uh, loose to hard pack trail. Uh, we did use it in the wet a couple of times and it actually shed quite well. The tread pattern itself is very, very similar uh, to a lot of Maxxis tyres that people might be familiar with. While its acronyms and compound acronyms might differ from Maxxis, the quality of the construction was, in our opinion, almost identical. We didn't notice any difference over uh, CST or Chen Chin Tyres premium offerings, the Maxxis. Uh, at a fraction of the price. So a really, really good tyre um, and we were quite happy with the way it performed on the trail. We did find that we needed to run slightly higher pressure on some of the rocky trails, uh, which took away from the ride feel a little bit. Um, but when riding on smoother terrain or maybe in pine forests or loose over hard pack, it performed really well and we could drop those pressures down a little bit more. When it got rockier, we were a little bit scared with the thinner sidewall. However, we didn't have any issues or cuts with these tires at all. We ran the CST BFT both front and rear on our bike. Um, in terms of pedaling efficiency, it has slightly lower 3.6 mil knobs, which rolled really, really well and due to its low weight, spun up quite nicely. Um, the side knobs are a little bit taller and gave us just enough grip in the corners and made it pretty good as a front tire as well. We see the CST BFT being a very, very popular tire for the trail crew. Front specific enduro gravity tires have become quite ubiquitous over the past few years. They all follow a similar format with the Goodyear Newton MTF following this pattern. It's got a staggered tread pattern that introduces a intermediate knob for lean angle traction and siping to help increase the flex of those knobs in certain scenarios. 
The tread pattern itself is probably an intermediate height. It's not as tall as some we've seen, but it's not low like a semi-slick. And as such, it really does well at grabbing in on loose and loamy soils. It also rolls quite well, considering how big and complex the tread pattern is, which is thanks to the harder rubber compound and the low tread pattern. Now this tire really shone on fast, loose, rough trails. This casing on these Enduro tires is a double wall with a reinforcement at the bead, and it was beautifully supple. I ran it anywhere from 22 to 23 PSI, and it offered noticeable support and small bump compliance as I was riding down the trail. This was really the highlight of these Goodyear tires for me was this casing. Now, while the low tread pattern did look like it would be fantastic on hard pack trails, I found that the performance there left a little to be desired. I think the combination of the low height and the kind of firm rubber made it feel a little washy on hard pack trails. Alternatively, on loose, loamy soils, it really bit in that harder rubber, really digging in to soft trails, moving it out of the way and helping you go where you want to go on the trail. Hard wearing, consistent, a supple are the three words that come to mind when I think about the Goodyear Newton MTF. The tread pattern really shines on loose over hard and loose trail conditions, particularly if you're riding somewhere that has a lot of big compressions and uh, hard G outs where the supple soft casing can really shine. If you ride on trails like that, this is a fantastic tire for you. The Newton MTR is Goodyear's rear specific enduro tire. I'm gonna beat you to it. Yes, it looks like a DHR2, but I don't think that's a bad thing. It's constructed with a dual ply 120 TPI casing with a bead insert at the rim and a hard wearing, relatively firm tread and rubber compound. Now this rear specific triple compound rubber prioritizes rolling speed and braking traction through the middle of the knobs and is a little softer on the edge to help with lean angle traction. This tire was a real surprise to me. I never used Goodyear tires previously. And uh, as is with any new tire, I had a few reservations when I was out on the trail, but I find myself comfortable to really push with this tire on the rear of my bike. It had great braking traction and heaps of lean angle support. It also was quite hard wearing. Uh, it lasted a lot longer than most of the other rear specific tires I typically use, given the amount of traction that's on hand. Also found the casing really supple and supportive. Now, it's got a rubber insert at the bead, so there's quite a bit of rim protection and I didn't have any rim dints during testing. Even at low pressures, where I, there was a noticeable increase in small bump compliance over some of the other tires I've used. Now, climbing and rolling performance was admirable, given the height of the knobs on this tire but not as fast rolling as something like a Pirelli Enduro R or a Specialized Eliminator. I feel like the only place this tire really left anything to be desired was on wet rock or route. Now, I don't ride that kind of stuff very often, but the chemical grip on offer there wasn't as much as some other tires we've had on test, and that's because the rubber compound isn't insanely soft and gummy. It's hard wearing and it lasts longer. Aggressive trail riders who prioritize lean angle traction and straight line braking performance from their rear tires would do great on the Goodyear Newton MTR. While it doesn't have the get out of jail free performance of a Pirelli Race T or the insane lean angle dependability of something like an Asagai, it's a really good mixed use rear specific tire that is hard wearing and good value. Here we have the Continental Cryptotal or Cryptotal, depending how you want to pronounce it, Front specific in the Enduro casing soft compound. Continental recently re released a full range of tires at a total of 40 different combinations between tire size, thread, compound, casings. If you can't find your tire, you're gonna really struggle to find it anywhere else. The front specific Cryptotal is very much what you used to see nowadays in, uh, in a front specific tire. Really good rounded profile with a 323 um, no pattern which offers fantastic uh, support and a fantastic rollability. Being a front specific tire, I've been riding this on the front of my Enduro bike um, in the Enduro, uh, Enduro casing with a soft compound. You could go for the super soft with a gravity uh, downhill casing but I found it perfect on my Enduro bike as it made it a really really um, good all-round tire. Uh, it has a really good rolling speed considering the levels of grip that you can get out of this um, out of this tire. I didn't really see any drawbacks um, from the tire when, when in use, being in wet, being in dry, um, 
loose over hard. It's probably one of the best round the tires I've ever experienced um, and my personal favorite out of all the ones I tested. Other than fantastic rolling speed for such a grippy tire as I mentioned, um, it has a really good uh, spread of the knobs into the side knobs. So you can really commit to a corner going from straight into a bank corner with a lot of confidence, which allows you to maintain the speed you're already carrying instead of having that feeling that you don't know if it's gonna grip. And that, to most of us riders, is, is a, fantastic, uh, a fantastic feature. Only feature, uh, only uh, thing that this tire really, uh, really doesn't perform at is in the price point, is the most expensive tire of the entire test. Uh, knowing what I know about the, about the tire and having tested the other tires in the range, I think it's worth giving it a go. Despite being a uh, soft compound tire, it actually wears uh, really well, uh, which kind of allows you to justify the, uh, the price point. This tire will suit a rider that wants a direct feeling tire with a lot of performance, without the compromise of a really low uh, rolling speed. So someone looking for a really good all-rounder, I would happily take this tire anywhere, everywhere, racing or just for a casual stroll. The Continental Cryptotal Cryptotal uh, Rear Specific Enduro Casing Soft Compound Tire. This is designed specifically for the rear. Continental, when they started designing their Cryptotal range, actually they had one tire in mind, uh, but through testing on, on their prototypes, they actually split the range into two for front and rear specific. The knobs are quite ramped, uh, which means you get a lot of rolling speed, but still a lot of braking power. But my favorite part is the side knobs being turned slightly inwards, which means that you have a really good predictable transfer into, uh, into the side of the tire. That means that at no point you feel like you're gonna lose grip, making you for a really confidence inspiring tire. Um, under really heavy braking and in steep terrain, I never felt that the tire really uh, conditioned my, uh, my ability to, to, push, uh, to push hard, which gave me a really, really uh, good confidence and um, hopefully a lot of speed as well. As with the front tire, the Continental Cryptotal uh, doesn't come cheap. Uh, it's the highest, uh, highest price in the entire test. Uh, again, high performance will uh, also translate um, in higher costs. And Continental being such a big brand, you know you can trust them and know you can have a really good tire out of it. The wear is really good uh, for a rear tire. I've been riding these tires even before the test um, as a personal favorite and I haven't had any issues with durability. With the uh, Enduro casing and the soft compound, I reckon this tire is for everyone that wants a tire that is reliable, uh, predictable. It has quite a small back compared to other tires uh, in the range, so you do get that direct feel, but you have a really supportive, um, really supportive casing that gives you a lot of feel, transmits um, a lot of feedback, but the soft compound does take away a lot of the chatter from the trail. If you're a trail and enduro rider that you race or you're just recreational, you definitely want to check out the Continental Cryptotal in the rear specific uh, tire. The next tire I'm going to talk to you about is probably the winningest tire from all tires in mountain biking. That includes cross country, downhill, enduro. It's not a cross country tire, it's an enduro and downhill tire. It was a tire developed by Colin Bailey back when he used to race for the Maxxis downhill team. As part of the downhill team, their job was to develop tires. The Minion DHF or downhill front has gone on from those days to become probably one of the most popular tires out there. Um, at 1286 grams, our 2.5 width Minion is in my mind the benchmark of tires. The one supplied to us is a double down casing. It is a 3C max grip. So it's pretty much everything you're gonna want on your like enduro bike or a big heavy, or like a big hitting trail bike. It rolls fast, it grips well, it has an amazing pedigree. Front or rear, I don't think you can really go wrong. Um, having the option to put something like a dis dissector on the back meant that when we were riding at places like Stromlo, I had that really good fast rolling and big grip combination uh, on my fiber, which is 165 mil travel rear and 170 front. Um, prior to this test, I was running this exact same setup um, and that was only to try and find a little bit more speed as Stromlo started to dry out. 
I wouldn't normally use the dissector on the rear uh, unless it, you know, we're in Canberra and it's like nice and hot and strong really dry. I'd normally run the DHF front and rear and the 2.5 and that tire has served me well all over the globe. Uh, even on a downhill bike with a downhill casing, I can't seem to fault them. The puncher resistance has been amazing. The grip, the wear life on the front, um, it's quite obvious after time to see, which is my preferred turning side. You get a little bit of uh, tearing at the base of the knobs. And on the rear, they sort of start to roll, roll off the edge. The wearing starts to roll a little bit. Um, but they are the benchmark in my mind for a gravity-based tire. And even if you look at an XO Plus side casing, they're probably not a bad little like trail-y XC bike tire for those people who just like to get out and ride and want something that rolls pretty quick, has heaps of grip, and a lot of combinations in regards to the rubber compound they can have and sidewall options. For me, the Minion DHF, designed by Colin Bailey, is my tire of choice. Next up, CST Graviteer. CST is a tire brand that a lot of people haven't heard of. The Graviteer comes in 29 and 27.5, like all tires in our range. And it rolls in at a staggering 1.5 kilos per tire. This is with a downhill casing. The rubber compound is an EPS 3C. As you would imagine, with a name like 3C, it sounds like it's come from somewhere else. Yes, CST and Maxxis are in the same place. You'll also find the Graviteer lends a lot of design traits from the Minion DHF and the Asa guy. And it's blended them really well. This was probably the big surprise of our tire test. At 84.95 and 2.5 inches in width, it was a big surprise. I would have looked straight past this even back when I was racing downhill. Not even looking at it going, oh, that is gonna be sturdy, I'll get that. You know, weight generally used to mean strength. At 1.5 kilos, it rolls really well and you don't even notice it climbing. I know some other people reviewed these tires before and whinged about what it's like to climb with. Personally, I didn't think it was that big a deal. And especially considering the weight itself, it meant when you were hitting rocks and wet roots and things like that, you didn't get as deflected. It was an incredibly supple casing and the grip from it was very much the same as its brother sister tires from Maxxis. Really impressed with the CST Graviteer. It's probably a tire that a lot of people should look at especially if you go through your tires quite quickly or you're looking at replacing a tire from a rental or something like that. Great bang for buck, really good tires and really surprised by CST. The CST Graviteer on our 30 mil internal DT Swift rims come out at 58 mil in width. The stiff DH casing, despite being quite supple, allowed me to run what a lot of people were surprised at at incredibly low pressure of 20 PSI in the front and 22 in the rear. These are not front or rear specific and I ran them as the same version, front and rear, with great results. Specialized Butcher Tire was first introduced in 2010. That's 14 years ago. Now a lot has changed with that tire since then, namely the rubber used and the casing used, but the tread pattern's still the same. It's got a really uniform wide 2-2 pattern with tall corner knobs. Now this tyre is looking to provide supreme performance in a wide array of conditions, either on the front or the rear of your trail or enduro bike. It's available in lots of different casings and compounds, but here we've got the soft T9 compound in the grid trail casing. Now if you look at this tyre, you might think it's a big heavy bruiser of a thing, but it's surprisingly light given how tall the tread is. It is one of the lightest ones I had on test with its single ply casing. Now, as if we here at AMB didn't have enough trouble defining the difference between a trail and an enduro tire, this one really does blur the lines because it's got a lightweight casing with a really soft, tall rubber compound. I found it really shone on hard pack and loose over hard trails where the soft rubber could really dig in and grab what was coming through in front of it. It also had a surprisingly good roll speed thanks to the lightweight from the compound. Again, this one really blurs the line between trail and enduro for me. There was one situation where I felt like this tyre didn't shine and that was under hard front braking coming into steep sections. I think the 
2-2 pattern with no intermediate knob led it to kind of railroad in a straight line in those sections. In those cases, I would prefer to have an intermediate knob to help with the weight transition when there's a lot of weight on the front tyre. Now, conversely, this tyre rolled really fast and on my local hard pack flow trails was a real favourite of mine. I would almost lean to take this tyre off my enduro bike and put it on my trail bike in a T9 compound on the front and a T7 on the rear. There is a harder compound available and that will make a fantastic choice for the rear of a trail bike. It would be long wearing, but also really grippy and fast and light, kind of ticks all the boxes. Riders who frequent hard pack trails and intermediate gradient terrain would really do well on a butcher tire, either on the front or the rear. Be careful to pick the right casing and compound to suit if it's on the front or the rear of your bike. That being soft and light on the front, heavy and hard on the rear to really get the most out of this tire. We should also mention this thing is a bargain compared to some of the other tires on test and comes in at nearly half the cost of some. So if you're fiscally conscious, check this one out. Specialized Eliminator tire offers a quite complex tread pattern in a few different casing options. It's got a 2-2-3 tread pattern that slowly introduces an intermediate knob to help with lean angle traction. Now this tyre is available in both the T7 and T9 compounds, along with a various different amount of casings. However, in this case, we've got the harder T7 compound in the grid trail casing. Now through testing, I had this on the rear of my enduro bike, and my first impressions were just how fast it rolled. If you look at this tyre, it kind of blurs the lines between a regular tyre and a semi-slick gravity tyre, in that it's got a relatively low profile set of centre knobs and intermediate knobs with tall corner knobs. As such, it really shone on hard pack fast trails where rolling speed and pedaling performance really outweighed the performance of braking traction and sidewall support. On those fast hard pack trails, I was getting lots of PRs on Strava and really noticing just how fast it rolled. That was also the same for when I was pedaling to and from the trails. Just a really fast, efficient tyre on the rear of my enduro bike. Now the single ply 60 TPI casing didn't give me any issues during testing, although I did need to use a fair bit of air to get the support from it I wanted, and this was at the sacrifice of some small bump compliance. In that case, I think I might have been better off on the thicker downhill casing, but on a regular trail bike, this casing is perfect. It's light, it's got enough support, and it will give you just enough rim protection out on the trail. Now you could also put this tyre on the front of your trail bike. It does have relatively low knobs, but if you were to spec it in the tackier T9 compound, it would make the great, a great front end companion on your trail or dare I even say down country bike. So the Specialized Butcher is in a grey area, somewhere to me between a regular gravity tyre and a semi-slick. It's fast rolling, has great acceleration and heaps of pickup on fast hard pack trails. It doesn't offer insane braking traction or anything like that, but on trail centre trails, hard pack stuff, it's really fast, has a lot of lean angle traction and is a fairly reliable performer out on the trail. It's also fantastic value relative to some of the other tyres here on the test. The Dissector is a tyre that Maxis worked with Troy Brosnan of Downhill World Cup fame to develop a fast rolling tyre that had excellent grip, loose over hard pack. I found that the Dissector as a front and rear tyre was a really good combination. Um, more, but more suited to a shorter travel bike, maybe is sort of like a 120 mil travel bike, front and rear, maybe 130 front, as opposed to my Pivot Firebird, which runs 170 mil travel on the front and 165 on the rear. That meant that as a result, I started to use it as a rear tire, using another Maxxis tire, the DHF, on the front to find the ultimate combination. The Dissector rolls really fast, it has really good braking, the puncture resistance of the double down casing is the same across all across the board. Um, I did find that at times when I did have it on the front on the longer travel bike, that the aggressive riding style meant that it did start to push a little bit. And despite the rubber being the same compound, it did feel like the rubber up front sort of wobbled around and squirmed a little bit. So as a rear tire, it is really, really predictable. And you will find that a lot of people that are using these on the bigger travel bikes, either your big hitting enduro bike or your downhill bike, use them as a rear only. And you'll see a lot of bicycle manufacturers specking them front and rear on that sort of 120 to 140 mil travel bike. Um, Wear-wise on the Dissector, it was pretty good. 
Um, it didn't sort of, the knobs didn't tear or anything like that. It started to, you know, the standard Maxis wear down type thing. Um, the preferred cornering side does get a little bit of ripping at the base, but, you know, I have to say, I sort of tend to ride the back brake a fair bit and I'm not surprised that the knobs sort of tore a little bit on the cornering edges. Um, other than that, it's 1156 grams. Uh, it's a 2.4 with tyre, so a little bit skinnier. Um, and I found the sweet spot for it on the front and on the rear. On the front, 22 PSI. On the rear, 24 PSI. So when I did pair the dissector with the Minion DHF on the front, I was running it at 24 PSI. All right, next up, we've got the Maxxis DHR2. It is a premium tyre. Its name, the DHR, has been around for a very long time. DHR standing for DH Rear. It is available in a number of different casings, as are all the Maxxis tyres, uh, starting at XO, which is quite thin, XO Plus, Double Down, which we have here for both of the tyres that I reviewed, uh, which has a butyl insert in the sidewalls, and then again in the downhill tyres as well, which is thicker again. The DHR2 that we have on review was sent to us in the Max Terra compound, which is a little bit firmer, a little bit harder wearing. And as such, we found that it was beautiful on the rear. It rolls a little bit faster than the Asagai, which we liked. It also is a little bit more durable than the Asagai with its softer compound. And we found that it really bit in and enabled us to rail some inside lines that we may not have been able to do with other tires. It's quite open. It sheds uh, wet dirt and mud pretty well. And it also stand, uh, stands up to skidding and direction changes a little bit more than some other tires. It did start to show signs of wear and side knobs tearing. Um, it was nothing major and it actually fared pretty well on some of the rowdier, rocky stuff that we rode. I really like the trail feel of the double down casing. It is a little bit more supple than downhill tyres uh, and it still provides enough support and stops you rimming out or pinging rocks and cutting sidewalls. It ran flawlessly and without issue in a variety of terrains that we rode it in. And we would recommend this as a tyre choice on the rear specifically. I have used the DHR on the front before, but I found that the transition from the centre knob to the side knob is a little bit wishy-washy. The transition on the Asagai that I re uh, reviewed as well was a, a nicer transition in between you know, straight line cornering and leaning into the turn. So I think the DHR, as its name suggests, is a better tyre on the rear. However, Still a very good tyre on the front and something that could be can considered front and rear. Due to its slightly lower profile knobs and its slightly narrower size, the 2.4 or 57 mils, uh, it is a little bit lighter than some of the other tyres that we've tested. It weighed in at 1199 grams and made it pedal a little bit easier than some of the other tyres that I've reviewed in the group of five that we've reviewed in the group test. Pedals pretty well, brakes exceptionally well, and works best in loose, dry conditions. Had the Asagai and the DHR. As the name suggests, the DHR has my vote as a rear tire, and the Asagai I much preferred on the front. If you are riding in looser, loamier conditions where gradient you have plenty of, I would definitely consider running the Asagai front and rear. Um, however, if you've got slightly peddlier uh, terrain, um, so I use this uh, tyre a lot at Stromlo and surrounding Canberra trails, our conditions are a little bit flatter, a little bit drier, definitely chuck a DHR on the rear. The Bontrager SE6 Team Issue only comes in one compound and one casing, so nice and easy to pick the, uh, the tire out of all the combinations. It's part of a range of three tires out of Bontrager's uh, SE range, which is the most aggressive range out of their full range. Uh, the SE6 is the newest edition. It's also the most aggressive. Uh, it's definitely trying to um, 
to take inspiration from other tires in the range that are front specific, not necessarily that you need to run the SE6 uh, in the front, but we found it to be the most natural place for it. Uh, so that's what we did for this test. The SE6 has quite low profile knobs in a very round profile. Uh, so I'm not joking when I say I thought I gained some horsepower when I put these tires on my bike because the rolling speed on them is fantastic. Uh, so if you're looking for a really good rolling speed tire, uh, these are, in my opinion, unbeatable from everything I've tried in the last few years. However, that comes at a compromise of grip. Uh, the rubber compound is quite hard and will not give you the support that you would expect from a gravity enduro tire, as Bontrager uh, calls it. Um, definitely a tire more suitable for someone doing more mellow terrain uh, and uh, less super steep, hard on the brakes, really needing a supportive tire um, sort of user. The Bontrager SE6 would be, I'd say, a perfect tire for a hard packed terrain where you really want speed and you really want support uh, from, your, from your rubber, from, from your tire. Um, as I did find that on loose over hard, it didn't have enough bite and uh, left me wanting a little bit more. If you're, if you're a rider in those conditions, uh, it's definitely a tire to consider. You also to consider is that Trek will offer you a 30 days, no question asks return. So buy the tire. It is pretty cheap compared to a lot of tires in the range. Um, so if you don't like it, you can just return it. But if you like it, I think if you just want to ride around with your mates and you don't want to be changing rubber uh, every six months, this will be a great option. The Bontrager SE5 Team Issue is the middle of the run of the SE range uh, from Bontrager. It, you can run in the front, you can run in the rear. When looking at the tire, the, uh, the, big, uh, the big blocks will will kind of indicate that it's a rear tire and you should run it as a rear tire if you want uh, good braking ability. Uh, again, just like SE6, the grip uh, on it is perhaps a bit lacking when on super steep terrain, but it has fantastic rolling speed. It performed really well on more mellow terrain where you can carry a lot more speed than you usually would uh, with an enduro specific tire. So perhaps a tire more suitable for someone that does a lot of trail riding, not necessarily a lot of enduro, they want speed, they want the convenience of not having to change the tire all the time as the compound is quite hard to last you a long time and it's quite well priced. The SE5 uh, pattern resembles a lot of rear specific tires out in the market so we thought that's going to be the best place to, uh, to put it. They're quite ramped, uh, you have a 2-2 configuration uh, with, uh, with quite rectangular blocks so you know you're going to have good rolling speed. You'd also expect to have really good braking uh, ability because they're quite ramped and use quite a, a hard compound. Don't expect a lot in super steep terrain, but make a fantastic partner on more undulating fast terrain. So an ideal partner, again, if you're using it as a, as a trial tire instead of an enduro tire. The Pirelli Scorpion Enduro M is yet another mixed terrain tire. Now, this tyre has a 2-2-2 tread pattern with quite a stagger and siping to help it give uh, knob deflection when you're introducing lean angle. It's available in a few different sizes and casings, but here we've got the hard wall casing, which is a bead reinforced single ply casing. Now, the tread pattern is really consistent and quite low profile. The rubber compound is on the harder side, but that gives fast rolling and durability above all else. So out on the trail, I'd say this tire is, I'm going to repeat myself here, but it's just the quintessential trail tire. It doesn't really shine anywhere, but it doesn't really let you down anywhere either. It's just got great middle of the road performance. It's pretty light, it rolls pretty well, it's really consistent. And for a lot of riders, a tire like this is going to be the perfect choice for 90% of the riding you're doing. If you want something more aggressive, Pirelli's race line is where you want to look. But for the majority of riders, this Enduro M is Perfect. So I had this mounted to the front of the, my enduro bike in the 2.4 inch width. Now thanks to the 222 tread pattern, it's really consistent whether you're going in a straight line or on lean angle. It has okay braking performance, but this isn't a rear specific tire. Uh, it does have a lot of good ramps, so it rolls quite well. I noticed it particularly shone on really hard, back, ba hard packed baked trails where the low tread height and relatively hard compound gave it a really good consistent feel. 
This tire was provided to us in the hardwall casing, which is one of their enduro casings. Um, it's surprisingly supportive for a single plaque casing and that's because it's got a rubber insert at the bead. Now this adds sidewall support and also helps to protect your rims. As such, I didn't have to go as high in pressures as I did on, as I did on some of the other single ply tires on test. There was enough support there and I didn't have any burps or rolling during the test. The Pirelli Scorpion Enduro M suits your average trail rider. Like if you really look in the mirror, am I the average trail rider? Am I out with my buddies riding on the weekend, maybe a couple of rides during the week? Do I occasionally ride my bike to the trails and want something that rolls fast, gives me good grip and lasts a long time and isn't too heavy? Great tire for you. Pirelli Scorpion Enduro R. Now this tread pattern specifically is part of their kind of condition specific tires. So the R stands for rear, but this tire really is for the use of the rear, on the rear of your trail or enduro bike on hard pack and loose over hard trails. As such, we see a really low profile tread pattern that has center, intermediate and corner knobs all around the same height. That gives a nice rounded profile and even though there isn't that much bite, really consistent traction as you lean the tire over to the edge. Now, thanks to this tire's really low profile and relatively hard rubber compound, it rolls insanely fast. I ride to and from the trails trying to save the planet and not drive my car and all that cool stuff. This thing is fast. Like, it doesn't feel like a mountain bike tire when you're pedaling along. There's no do -do 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 -do. It's just smooth. It's the same out on the trails. Most of us don't ride stuff that means you need an guy on the front and a rear, unless you're at Maydina or Threadbo, a fast rolling rear tire really is gonna benefit you. I saw that, I put down one of my fastest ever times down a trail that's got a lot of pedaling in it, sitting down and mouth breathing just because of how fast these tires are, couldn't believe it. That being said, I do occasionally go and poke around on some steep stuff and in those scenarios, this tire wasn't ideal. I was blowing through braking points and getting stood up in turns just because I wasn't quite slowing down fast enough. But for 80% of my normal riding, this tire's unreal. This tire is best suited to someone who's looking for a rear tire on their trail or enduro bike, who rides a lot of trail centers, a lot of machine built stuff, a lot of smooth, fast trails. Also, if you're trying to cover a lot of distance and do some big missions, it can't be understated what a difference a proper rear specific fast rolling tire can make to the longevity of your ride, how much energy you have and how easy it is, not only to get down the trail, but to get to and from the trail. That's you, the Pirelli Scorpion Enduro R, it's a great choice. So there we have it, 24 different tyres, rated and reviewed for your viewing pleasure. Uh, we really hope this helps inform you, the viewer, to uh, make the next best choice when you're going out to buy tyres for your bike. If you've got any questions, throw them in the comments below. We'll have all the testers lurking on AMB's YouTube page, getting in there and uh, happy to get in there and give any feedback you might need. Be sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with everything we're doing here at Australian Mountain Bike.